everyone, it's Louise from Craybell Greenhouse here. Um, it's a beautiful day again today. It's supposed to be really, really warm, so please enjoy and be safe outside today. It's, um, and even on this weekend, it's supposed to be pretty warm this weekend as well. But um, anyway, so here at Prairie Bell, um, we've been working with our plants and uh, we planted up some of our garden. Last time we planted up our salsa garden. And uh, now that it's growing and going, now we need to know what to do next with our, uh, with our plants and uh, hopefully they'll take off. And I've got with me here today, um, Dane Fraze. He's our uh, resident, uh, Professional agrologist. Professional agrologist is his title. There we go. And he's the mastermind behind our Prairie Bell blends for fertilizers. So we're going to be talking about fertilizers today. So Dane, I just have some questions for you. For sure. In regards to fertilizers. So um, what we have right here is the Prairie Bell Slow Release Blend. Can you tell us about this one? Certainly. Now these slow release blends are designed to last for several months or throughout the season. It's 18% nitrogen, 18% phosphorus. So this particular fertilizer is going to promote lush green growth and uh, a fairly vigorous, vibrant plant and, and getting a lot of green material. Uh, that slow release function really helps to stretch out the life of the plant and, and it goes in um, a nice even growth pattern rather than surging in spurts and then slowing down and then surging again. So we get a nice even lush growth with this so would it be fair to say that this is kind of like the meat and potatoes of fertilizers? Nitrogen and phosphorus, yes, are the meat and potatoes. Without those two, you're not going to get a very healthy plant. It'll look pale yellow and it'll probably be fairly spindly and have a poor root development if it's lacking phosphorus. Okay, that's great to know. And then also, how often do you use this? This you might use once, maybe twice a season. Uh, either when you're starting the plants or just after they've been started, sprinkling a teaspoon or two uh, in an area two to three square feet about the size of a fairly large planter, that would be enough for that plant for about a month, month and a half worth of feeding. Uh, you can just incorporate it just into the soil surface, mix it in with your fingers so it's just under the soil surface and not sitting in the sunshine. Okay, and that's, uh, I think it's also important probably not to get any of this on the plant itself, and if you do, you want to just want to rinse it off or just knock it off. We have some plants here. This is the fertilizer that we use here in our store for all our potted plants. And uh, so you'll see they're extremely lush and beautiful and they are just good, good quality plants. All right, and then we've got another fertilizer here. Excuse me. <coughs> I'll just set this one down here. Um, and this one is the all-purpose blend that we have here. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about this one. Sure. The all-purpose blend adds a little bit more than the slow release. Instead of just nitrogen and phosphorus, the last two numbers indicate potash and sulfur. Um, this is definitely more applicable to something that's producing fruit or flowers mm -hmm. throughout the year, something that's uh, needing that sulfur particularly to get a, a nice healthy bloom mm -hmm. and a very vibrant deep colored bloom. But with the lack of sulfur, you're just going to find your blooms are a little pale, a little smaller, not quite as many. Mm -hmm. On fruits uh, and vegetables, um, cucumbers, things like that in particular, uh, without that potash value, you're going to get a kind of a weak thin stem, it's more prone to breakage, mm -hmm. more prone to snapping off. Um, other than that, this is a very nice all-purpose, all-round kind of fertilizer. It can be used throughout the season, uh, probably applied two or three times throughout the year, just sprinkling it over the surface and then kind of working it in with your hole or rake if you're able to. Okay, and do you need to water it in? Or uh, these are water-soluble fertilizers, so as you water them in, they will dissolve. It can take uh, three to seven days for it to fully dissolve and, and be available in the soil, but after that, the plant is able to access it for Okay, and can you dissolve this in a watering can? And You uh, could dissolve in a watering can. It doesn't work as well. Uh, you do tend to have a bit of a layer of grit on the bottom developing. Uh, you can try it, but it would have to sit in that water for a couple days probably. Before to dissolve. It would dissolve. Oh, okay. If you're going to look at mixing it in a watering can, I would go with a liquid fertilizer instead. Oh, okay. And I think we have some other ones to get. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we use also here is the Nature Source Liquid Fertilizer. We use this on a regular basis here. We have them in two uh, sizes. We actually have one that's called a dosing pump, and this is a refill. This one, the way you use it is uh, you just give it, you know, just one squirt in a four liter watering can. So um, that's the dosing pump. It's uh, really easy to use, not complicated. This is just a refill, they're exactly the same thing. 
So this is nature's source plant food all-purpose fertilizer. And maybe you can give us a little bit of a rundown Certainly. on the product. Now with these products you want to use them about every one to two weeks. Uh, they're designed to be used at low doses every seven to fourteen days uh, when you're watering. Mm -hmm. So you don't need it to use every time you're watering but but every week or so and just give the plant a little bit of a shot to keep on going. Mm -hmm. Okay so this is more like a dessert. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a dessert, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and, a, and a constant feeder rather than yeah. just floating it all up front. It gives that plant that little bit of a boost that it needs for just shining. And uh, okay, yeah. We have one other uh, type of uh, fertilizer we want to talk about today, and I did mention this in my last video, and it's this is the product called t the Talk of Tomatoes, and um, this is a, also not a very high formulation. It's a three three four, and maybe Dane, you can tell us sure. a little bit about that. Uh, Talk of tomatoes really helps to end blossom end rot in tomatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, blossom end rot is not a fungal disease, but in fact, it's a calcium deficiency in tomatoes. So without enough calcium, your tomatoes are going to get that, that ugly discoloration on the bottom yep. side of the Very that disappointing when you've got that luscious tomato, like it's ready to eat, exactly. and you turn it over, it's got that big black spot. Blossom end rot is more common in sandy soils or mm -hmm. soils that don't have a lot of clay. Clay really likes to hold on to calcium. If you have too much sand, you don't have a lot of calcium that comes with it. Mm -hmm. So adding in some calcium either with a product like Taco Tomatoes or some crushed up eggshells. Um, with this particular product, you're getting about 12% calcium. Mm -hmm. Mix that in right when you're repotting your tomatoes or right around the surface as those roots start to develop. That way they're able to get that calcium and help reduce blossom end rot later in the season. One other question I have for you, in yep. regards to applying products, what are some of the safety uh, precautions you should be using? These granular products are all very safe, um, simply don't ingest them, and if you can keep them away from your mouth, that would be great. Um, Probably from your pets? Your pets too, it wouldn't matter if your pets managed to sneak a nibble or two, <laughs> they're such low concentrate your pet will never notice, they might okay. like it because it has a bit of a taste of salt. Oh, okay. So okay. that, that yeah. might be it. Um, Using a small dose recommended on each of the labels, uh, incorporating it, just working it into the surface with your fingers or a small trowel, this helps it uh, get into the soil root zone. If it's mm -hmm. on the surface, roots don't grow up, they grow down, and you have to put it where the roots are. Mm -hmm. uh, the liquid fertilizers can be applied with your watering can, and that can go over the top, over the foliage. But if you're able to do so, it's best to water on the base of the plant rather than risk burning some of the leaves. Yeah, time of day for using uh, uh, liquid fertilizer? Generally, earlier morning or later in the afternoons, evenings are best. Uh, so it's kind of not in the heat of the day. That's right. Yeah, avoid the heat of the day. You're going to get more effective uptake on the shoulders of the day. Okay, awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Dane. It's You're been very a welcome. pleasure having you here. Mm -hmm. Dane is my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us again today here at Prairie Bell Greenhouse. Uh, I will just add that uh, these fertilizers are all for sale here at the greenhouse. And um, the all-purpose and the slow-release fertilizers are $10.99. And talk of tomatoes is $14.99. And the dosing pump and the refill for the dosing pump, uh, this is $15.99 and this is $21.99. They go a long way. They'll last you for, I don't know. At least a season, probably, probably into next year as well. But it's a great way to make the plants look like they did when they came home from the greenhouse, since that's what we use to give our plants the best start. That's right. All right. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day.